Australia's housing market is a straight up Ponzi scheme and everyone's in on it. Investors, banks, politicians, they're all feeding the beast. House prices are completely detached from reality, but no one wants to do anything about it because the entire system depends on this endless, relentless growth. But here's the thing. You can only push it so far before the entire housing market comes crashing down. I'm Biko Konstantinos and that's what we're going to talk about today. I was on a train and this woman opposite me said, Every time you smile, I want to invite you back to my place. I asked, are you single? She replied, no, I'm a dentist. And I can almost guarantee that you'll like my content more than visiting the dentist. So please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Today we're going to check out segments from the interview with Equity Mates and Matt Barry. Here's the full video which goes for over 50 minutes and I recommend you check it out. I'm pretty sure Matt Barry was the first one to start likening the Australian economy and housing market to a Ponzi scheme. And that analogy has really taken root because the Australian housing market has turned into a speculator's paradise where those who bought property years Years ago are right at the top of the Ponzi but the poor folk trying to buy into the market right now are right smack bang at the bottom and have to pay ridiculous artificially inflated prices just so those at the top of the Ponzi can keep making insane profits. So for those who haven't read it how would you sum up uh, what you cover in the article? The country's fucked. <laughs> 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 Tell us what you really think, Matt. It's not a functional society anymore. Um, you need people to be able to afford to buy housing and shelter uh, in order to have a functional society. Dead right. The hallmark of a functioning society is affordable housing. Because if you've got people who are able to afford to buy their own home, or if they decide to rent, it's affordable for them, then that solves the accommodation problem for people, which is an absolute necessity. Because everyone needs a safe and secure place to live. And when everyone does have that, they're basically freed to pursue things in life without worrying about accommodation. They may want to start a business, start a family, maybe even just start some hobbies and enjoy doing things they like to do. But when housing is unaffordable, it totally destroys people's lives and creates a dysfunctional society. In Sydney now, I think the last time I looked at the median house price is about 1.8 million. Um, which is mathematically impossible for the average person to buy the average house. And yet all these people salivate because Sydney house prices are through the roof. Instead of the collective licking of the lips, massive alarm bells should be going off because we've destroyed the housing market so badly that the average wage earner has no chance of buying their own home unless they have help from their parents. This isn't something to be proud of. It's a bloody embarrassment. And as a country, we should be ashamed. Find a did a study back then when I think that median house price is about 1.5, 1.6 million, where it said in Sydney, it takes now 46, 47 years to save for a deposit. Not the house, the deposit. Just, just, yeah, so you can sell for 20 years old, you can start saving for your deposit, get to 70 years old. And of course, by then, the house price is zero on the end of it. Just do what the boomers tell you and make some sacrifices. Never go out, never buy any coffee, only eat one meal a day because who needs food? Never go on holidays, live in your parents' basement, only eat rice and soya sauce, and guess what? You can do all that and be able to afford your own home when you're 128 years old. Welcome to the Australian Housing Ponzi, where property owners earn more from their house prices going up each year than you earn for a whole year working at a job. And more than that, their house price gains get tax concessions while you get Jack Diddley squat. You go to the Commonwealth Bank mortgage uh, repayment calculator, you know, you take 1.8 million, you take the 20% deposit off, which I don't know where that's coming from, and then you feed it into, a, say, a 30-year repayment schedule, and it's something like $9,000 a month after tax mm. that you've got to pay for a home loan like, yeah. for 30 years. Mm. Mm. Uh, how does that make sense? Yeah. It makes zero sense, Matt. And that's why it's a Ponzi scheme. Because whether you're renting now or able to buy your own home, 
either way you're getting screwed. Renting's like the Hunger Games where you're always one step away from homelessness, while to buy a house you have to take on a massive mortgage and your repayments will require a huge percentage of your income, so you're left with very little for everything else. Lee Kuan Yew from Singapore soon realized that nobody would fight for the country unless they had the ability to own their own home. In this country now, it is impossible in many parts of the country for the average person to do that. So this is going to lead to a social catastrophe. It's going to lead to all sorts of problems and social unrest. It's already here, Matt. Young people feel disillusioned and betrayed. Generations of Australians enjoyed affordable housing, and that's for a house with a yard, not a tiny dog box apartment. And yet, instead of trying to preserve that affordability for future generations, we've tried to suck every cent of profit from those properties. So now we're basically handing over a broken and unfair housing market. We're handing young people a shit sandwich and expecting them to enjoy Enjoy it. You know, if you look at what's happened all around the world in property markets, they've blown up into a bubble, whether it's uh, in the GFC in the United States, um, in the UK, UK in uh, Portugal, Spain, Greece, you name it, you don't have a soft landing. You have a horrible landing. Don't even mention house prices crashing, Matt. You could get charged for blasphemy for saying that in Australia. Policymakers would rather destroy the entire country than see house prices fall by more than a few percent. Everything in the media right now has something to do with property. They're completely captured. So we'll, we'll win a gold medal in the Olympic Games and there'll be an article, what does this mean for Australian property? <laughs> right? yeah, 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 yeah. And so all you're hearing about is property, 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 property. Bloody right, Matt. Just this last weekend, I caught up with two groups of friends and guess what they wanted to talk about? Bloody freaking property. And in one case, it went on for about 30 minutes. I don't understand the infatuation people have with record house prices when the consequences of these prices are destroying our nation. We're on this massive home building um, spree. In fact, we are the second in the world for a developed nation globally in the amount of housing we build, both on a per capita basis and also as a percentage of housing stock basis. And why are we still in a, in a massive uh, crunch in terms of the ability to, to, to find housing and why is it so expensive? I love it how Matt debunks the supply mantra by proving that Australia builds some of the most housing in the entire world. There is actually no demand for additional housing in this country. Zero, nothing, like zilch. <laughs> which is pretty shocking, I think, probably to most people, given the fact that they're probably hang on for dear life trying to rent or mm, pay their mortgage. Mm. The demand is entirely from a completely out of control, unhinged and uncalibrated mass immigration program. A mass immigration program where some months we bring 100,000 people into the country. One of the biggest factors creating excessive demand for housing is high levels of immigration. And recently, those levels have been out of control. So when you've got not enough housing for all the people in the country who need housing, the demand overpowers supply, which puts upward pressure on house prices and rent prices. Yeah, every um, Australian uh, woman has to have 2.1 children to maintain the population. Our fertility rate right now is 1.63 and dropping like a rock because every time home prices go up 10%, uh, HSBC have shown that the birth rate drops by 1%. And this is an absolute tragedy in my opinion. Millions of Australians are choosing not to have children or to have less children than they really want because housing costs are so ridiculously expensive. And I get it, if you're struggling just to make ends meet, it could feel extremely daunting thinking about having children. But instead of keeping immigration levels fairly low and steady, which would ease pressure on the housing market due to our low current birth rates, we're doing the absolute opposite, which is making life way worse for everyone except property owners. A mass immigration program where of a country of 26 million people, there are 2.4 million people in this country on temporary visas. We have 800,000 in the country studying here where there are only 6.4 million international students in the world, according to UNESCO. So we have 12% of the global international student population sitting here in two or three cities in Australia. Why on earth do we have that many students in Australia when we're in the middle of the worst housing crisis ever seen? I know why, because it helps grow the economy. Easy, relentless growth with absolutely no care for Australian citizens being screwed. So as long as house prices gently drift up and as long as wages are gently suppressed, businesses are happy 
and um, and the citizens are happy. Most people are happy because one third of people own their own home mm. outright. One third are on a mortgage and they're happy they bought previously because the house prices are gently drifting up. And one third are renters who are a bit unhappy. So those who already owned property are happy, but those who are renting or trying to buy their own home should be bloody ropeable. It's not their fault that policies have turned the housing market into a speculative play toy for the rich. And it's not their fault that Australia as a country has become I'm obsessed with building wealth through property. Now that's probably the nuance that, and that's probably uh, sparked a lot of the frustration of the last few years is there's no more gentle drifting when it comes to house prices. No. It feels like it's, it gentle left the building like five years ago. House price rises haven't been gentle for the past 25 years. House price growth has eaten wage growth for breakfast. And check out the recent correlation between immigration surges and rent price surges. It's very uncanny how they align so closely. Everyone is in on the Ponzi. So the ASX 100 is completely in the Ponzi. The construction industry in this country is, is, is huge. That's all in on the Ponzi. Mm -hmm. Real estate's completely out of control. The media is in on the Ponzi. The government's in on the Ponzi. Everyone's in on the Ponzi. Everyone indeed is in on the Ponzi. If the housing market was a pregnant cow, everyone's trying to suck on the tits with no care for the cow. They just want to keep profiting from the housing market and will do everything in their power to make sure nothing gets in the way of their profits. If everyone's in on the Ponzi, how are you so confident that it'll all, all come, it'll all be unwound? Because math. <laughs> <laughs> We're facing the biggest decline in um, in real disposable income in the developed world right mm. now. You know, taxes in the last year went up seven point six percent, which is the highest in the developed world, and disposable income went down six point one percent. Yep, the cost of living and cost of housing crisis is sending people backwards financially. Now the question is, how long can people keep going backwards before something in the economy and the housing market cracks? Everyone knows. I mean, you just you go to the pub and try and buy a beer, and eighteen dollars a pint now, mm, right? Mm. Everyone knows the price. Of everything going through the roof. I've got my, my steak at the pub index. It used to be ten bucks for a steak down the pub. Yeah. You know, then it was like forty bucks. Then it was fifty bucks. Then it was seventy bucks. Sometimes I see ninety bucks. Price rises in Australia, like many places in the world, are out of control. The price of groceries and electricity, which you need to sustain human life have basically doubled in just a few years. This is having a massive impact on millions of people and one in five Australians are now saying they stress about money daily. So you've got a, you've got a, you've got a crisis where the actual value uh, of, um, of money that, that, that people are receiving their wages compared to what they can purchase is, is, is being turned into confetti and house prices are in a parabola that are totally and completely out of control. The destruction in the value of your money is a very important point that many people don't realize. If you think about the energy required to work a full-time job all year, 30 to 40 years ago, that energy provided you with money that was the equivalent of around one third of the median house price. Fast forward to today, and that same amount of energy working for an entire year only gets you around one tenth of the median house price. And that's why young people today are getting such a raw deal. At some point, everyone just goes, wow, I can't afford to pay my rent anymore, or I can't afford to pay the mortgage anymore. Now, when millions of Australians can no longer afford to pay their rent or mortgage repayments, if that's combined with surging unemployment, Australia's housing Ponzi could finally collapse. I'm Biko Constantinos. <laughs>